What is going on, all my video game movie maniacs out there? It's your boy Preston, Fat Samurai Guy, back again with another Movie Dojo podcast episode. And it's epic today. That's right, because we are talking about when action movies become video games. That's right, that's the topic of today. And the reason why we're bringing it up, we're going to get to it in a second here. But it was a nice, fun, awesome idea that my brother from another mother, Director James Couchet brought up to me. He hit me up. I was like, ooh, <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> so we're going to have some fun talking action movies and video games and all that good stuff. But we can't, we're talking video games. I can't do it without the radical one here. So we got Radical Reggie. Welcome back to the channel, brother. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And James, of course, this is your second home, man. Welcome back. Awesome to be back, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we're just going to go ahead and jump right into this. We have a big, huge plethora of titles to talk about. And I'm glad Reggie's here because I my some of my my memory is like fuzzy because I haven't yeah. played these games in five billion years. But Reggie probably and James, they're probably like, oh, yeah, we know that game. That game sucked. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no. That game was legit. So I'm glad I have these two awesome gents here with me today. Uh, but before we go down the list and uh, we get into it here. Let's play a little trailer here of my man's upcoming video game based off of his award-winning indie action film, Lost Phoenix. That's right. The film is legit. That's right. I said it. Let's check out the game right here. Here we go. Yes, yes, yes. Had to show that trailer, man. I'm really excited to play the game. Yeah. And Reggie, this is something new. James is a trendsetter. I think in the history of all entertainment, movies, and video games, media <laughs> related projects, mm -hmm. this has never been done in the history. This has never been done. This is the first time where the director who creates this amazing, fun, 80s, 90s action Hong Kong movie throwback indie flick, The Lost Phoenix, which you can watch on Tubi and Amazon Prime right now. He, the director creates an indie flick, and then the director creates a video game by himself based off of his film. I, I don't think this has ever been done. So, James, what? how did you come up with this idea to make a video game based off your movie? This is wild. I, will say, I, I didn't do it entirely by myself, but I'll get to that later, yeah. but... Okay. Uh, even when I was making this movie, I thought, wouldn't it be really cool to, it, you know, to make a video game based on like a you know, like a platformer or like a beat 'em up or something? Because you don't see that Hollywood doesn't really right. do they don't do video games anymore based on movies. Like they they did like they, they used to do it a lot. Then it was all mobile games, and now it's mm -hmm. nothing. So as I am like wrapping up the film and going into post-production, like, okay, I may maybe this could happen, but what would it be? So I start looking at like Unity and Unreal and Game Maker. And then I discover this thing called GB Studio, which allows you to, it's a software that allows you to make Game Boy and Game Boy Color games that will run on real hardware. So, That's awesome. you know, I'm finishing up the movie. If you're so often, I'll take a break, like go like, tinker with uh with pixel art or like you know engines design the movie comes out focus more on the game and i quickly realize i'm not very good at game making it sucks <laughs> and i kind of realized like okay i could maybe make a good game but i would have to put everything else on the on the, the shelf i could not do more no more movies no none of that just just make a game based on the movie i made and i was feeling pretty down just for last, I went on to Fiverr and typed yeah. in GB Studio and a couple names popped up. And so, you know, fixed on this one dude named uh, called Elvis. Uh, I played played a couple of his games, actually. He's really good. And so I reach out just out of curiosity, like, hey, what's the what's the process look like? What um, if I decided to do this, what would it, what it would be? And before I knew it, we're suddenly making a game together. And it's like, well, that that happened. Didn't even sink until the next day. But yeah, basically. <clears throat> I had to like draw up a design sheet 
uh, like how the game's supposed to function, how the lives work, the level, the, 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 like the level layouts, the characters. I send pictures of, of, you know, the actors in the movie. Like here's, here's what the characters are supposed to look like. A day later, I get back this sprite sheet and all like all my actors are in eight bit, which was awesome. just awesome. To, this is really awesome to see. Yeah. And yeah, for about the next couple of weeks, we just were back and forth, like, trading like information trading builds i'd get i'd get a build i tested feedback i became the play tester um the director the producer i adapted the story to uh to make it work better as a game right and by the end it's just, i also like i hired a gb studio musician and so was sending him like music clips from the movie like can you convert this into game boy music and so working working with him there to get that oh, done wait that that's in the game like <coughs> yeah. eight bit version of that chick tunes wow that's oh yeah awesome. so the, yeah the music from the movie has been adapted it's in the game wow this is amazing um, dude yeah i wanted to be i wanted to be really authentic because i remember playing like the licensed games and the ones for whatever reason i really liked especially were the ones that had the music you know the, the, if you if you got the music like if you if you give me like a Batman game that has like the most generic sounding action music versus give me like with it or give, or give me one that has like the Joel Schumacher Batman theme. Right. And it's right, like, okay, right, right, right. this might be a terrible game, but at the very <laughs> least it it's, it's authentic, you know? Right, 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 right. But yeah, yeah it, uh, it came out last week. Uh, it is available now on itch.io. Uh, my recommendation, uh, Play it through an emulator with a controller. Um, you can play with a keyboard, but why do you hate yourself? And um, yeah, it's just it. It's been awesome, and honestly, it makes me want to do this for every movie. Yeah. And all right. You, yeah. So all my movies going forward now is like because I didn't start working on the game really until after the movie was done. Whereas okay. now I'm going to try to be like, well, I'm in pre-production right now on a movie, and I've started to like write design sheets for potential video games. Nice. Uh, Dude, this is awesome. Yeah. Go ahead, Rick. Quick, quick question. Um, so yeah. do you think you guys will ever do a physical release for the game? I've thought about it. I really have. I don't know. There would have to be some demand for it. Right. But yeah, like I, I could print these out on, on Game Boy carts. The yeah. downside is this. Um, to do this is not super cheap. And then you have to sell it for even more. So are you really going to drop 60 bucks on a Game Boy game when you could drop that 60 on a brand new game? There, or like five brand new games on sale. Yeah, there's a pretty strong Game Boy community out there for the, the homebrew, man. So I think, uh, yeah. It might, I mean, might work. I, I wish they had kind of work. like that, almost like a Blu-ray on demand type situation where you, they just like order it and you could like do it on demand. Mm. Um, but yeah, like I would, I, I want to have like physical cartridges made, um, just cause I want to have one, <laughs> but right, also right. to kind of give them to like people involved in the film I, and maybe have them be like crowdfunding, uh, crowdfunding rewards later on. But Copy that. I, Copy that. I haven't had a chance to play this on Game Boy Color hardware, but I have played it on a MiU Mini and playing a portable, definitely like works really nicely in a portable system. Nice. Um, just it looks great on the laptop, but it just feels like it was meant for portable. Copy okay. that. Copy that. Well, hey, you ne never say never. He, he might. You never know. You may. He may do it. Yeah. So that was a great yeah. question. I mean, I was the crazy out. guy who was like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn my movie into a video game." I <laughs> like, I made an action movie during the pandemic on a shoestring budget. Yeah. And then, like the the thing is. This 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 has never this has never happened, and the way I know that is every time I tell people, like everybody thinks it's really cool, but first they have to get over that hump of, wait, what? You, a a, a what? A video game? What? Yeah. Like they have it takes them a second to like get past that whole like, oh, that's a thing that can happen, right. and yeah. yeah, so it's it's always really funny watching how long it takes someone to get over that initial like disbelief. Right, right. Well, a big well, I, part of making this was yeah. studying other, studying the kind of the movie-based video games that I grew up with. Yeah. 
um, and how they all adapted their game, their st- the stories from their movies to make for more playable games. Right. And that's one of the reasons why I'm like, Preston, we should talk about this because <laughs> the, yeah. the stuff, the stuff that came out is absolutely amazing. And even the bad games can be really, really interesting. Right, right, right. Well, anyway, congratulations on the Thank release you. of the game. Uh, the link will be in the description box below of this video. You guys can go there and check it out and play it for free. Of course, tips are welcome. Uh, mm-hmm. Keep supporting uh, indie filmmakers right here. But really quick, before we get to the list, before we get, uh, go down memory lane here, uh, just for those who are watching right now, the the, the style, James, of the game, it kind of looks like action platformer. But I think you mentioned before that this is kind of Castlevania inspired, right? Where you could switch between the two leads of the mm-hmm. film. Yeah, basically, uh, Elvis is a big uh, Castlevania fan, and we were that's how we kind of discussed the game in terms of okay. old school Castlevania, right? Um, but yeah, I rearranged the story so that the two main characters team up at the very beginning, okay. and so you just press select and bounce between them, and they complement each other really well. Like the one character, Isaac, uses a sword, um, right. right, and then the other character, Layla, uses a gun, and they're both great for different scenarios. Um, nice. so you, I, I tend to switch between, between them a lot, but if you ever yeah. want extra challenge, just pick one at the start of the first level and stick with them Okay. because you're going to run into situations where, oh yeah, Layla just like annihilates people, but then she encounters bats and bats are real sons of bitches in this game. Need that sword. As Need yeah, sword, that's the, yeah. the sword makes life with bats so yeah. much easier. Nice. Nice. Copy that. Reggie, I'm putting you on the spot. Favorite Castlevania game. Rondo of Blood. Ooh, nice, nice, yeah. very nice. Yeah. It had difficult I levels. I like the different paths that you had in that game. Um, the different, well, well, not all the different paths, but um, that game was just really solid for like the story and like the like the, what led into it, like what it led into with the Castlevania Symphony of the Night. So I, I just love that game just for that reason too. And right, had animated right. cutscenes in the intro were great. Uh, it, was, it was deep, and you got to fight a lot of the older enemies from older Castlevania games in that game too. Oh shit! So that was kind of cool. Yeah, there's a part all where you, right. fight, you fight this um, dark priest, and he starts to summon all the monsters from the original game, like the bat, the mummy, uh, Frankenstein's monster, and all that stuff. So yeah, nice. and the music, the music in that it's game is incredible. It is. I might do a let's play of that game for like <laughs> October, getting the getting the getting the mood, the horror mood. Um, but yeah, let's have some. Let's yeah, let's have some fun here. Let's go down uh, some some uh, some titles here. Go down <laughs> the list of memory memory lane, making me feel old, but it's all good. It's all fun. Uh, but yeah, James has some picks here. We got we're gonna start with the '80s, and then after we go through the '80s, the '90s, the 2000s, I have some bootleg list on the side here, and I will just do that just for funsies at the end here. But at the very first here. For the 80s, Terminator, Total Recall, and Predator. And I'm assuming these oh. are the ones uh, from the, the 8-bit Nintendo versions. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't remember any of these being good. <laughs> I don't think, uh, you're, not, you're not misremembering. They were okay. all pretty terrible. Right, right. But Reggie, they were did you also, play those? It, it's surprising occasionally they got Arnold's likeness. Like I think the the, the the opening screen of Total Recall is a very ugly pixelated Arnold Schwarzenegger before you like that game is so bizarre. Like yeah. you get yanked into corner into alleys by like peak guys half your size, and you just like punch them like to the other side of the screen as Arnold. Um yeah. I, it's one of those things, a lot of these, so a lot of these movie-based games from back then, they didn't really know how to, what to adapt, how to adapt it, and what to ignore from the movie. So they just try to cram in things that don't quite work. And I think the, I forget the part of the movie where he gets yanked into the alley and is, you know, beaten up by a little person, but, you know, they put that in the game. Um, (laughs) Basically, they were, they were... The, the way they tried to sell those games, obviously they put the cover, the movie right. on the cover. That was yeah. that was how they yeah. mainly tried to market them and sell them. Like they all play the total. Re- they tried not to show footage. Of course, that was your, you found that out on your own when you bought the game. Yeah. And, yeah. But, um, what the oh, fuck yeah. did I do wrong? 
Yeah. <laughs> I got this game for Christmas. This is the only thing I have to play till my birthday. And that was the first movie where I actually saw Arnold actually get beat up. It was Total Recall. Like that was the first one. I was like, wow, how, how did this happen? Because he's always it was Sharon traumatized. Stone who beat him up, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And Michael I mean, Ironside. Yeah, Michael Ironside got some good licks in before, you know. Yeah. See, Sucker punch. See, see you at the party, Victor. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I got another one for you, James. Uh, Robocop. Oh, yeah. Nintendo 8-bit. And I remember uh, being so excited to rent that. And I was like, oh, man, the first level has the 8-bit version of the Robocop theme song. Right? And then I was like, this is awesome. And then level two starts. Kept going. And I was like, oh my God, we're still doing this. <laughs> Level the thing 30. I was absolutely <laughs> trying to avoid with Lost Phoenix. <laughs> oh, I was man. like, oh, this is horrible. This is horrible. But yeah, I, I don't remember those being any good. But yeah, there was a Rambo game. I never played Rambo for Nintendo 8 bit era. Did you ever play Rambo, Reggie? Uh, I think I vaguely, I don't know which version I played of it. I remember there was a Rambo game I played where you have to rescue hostages. So. I don't know if that was the NES version or the Genesis one, but I remember right. it was okay. But um, it, it was, was nothing it like I was like, I'm thrilled to play, like, hey, let's play Rambo. People. Like, no, I wasn't like that. So, what was yeah. that, James? Were, were you were you behind his back shooting dudes, or was it like a side scroller? Side scroller. Side. Okay, so it's probably yeah. in the S one. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Now, Die Hard. I don't remember playing Die Ugh. Hard. So. I Die Hard is one of the things I really wanted to talk about because okay. there's like there are five Die Hard games, right, and for right, the right. most part, they all are very different in how they interpret Die Hard. Mm -hmm. And the first one for the NES is fantastic for two reasons. Number one, you have a foot leader because John McClane <laughs> is barefoot. So if you run across debris or broken glass, your foot meter goes down. Wow, and like. So of all the things in the movie, you decided to do that, guys. That's, you know, yeah. good yeah, on I heard you. it's uh, Quentin Tarantino's favorite game. Oh, God. <laughs> probably, probably. And the other one is there's a finite number of enemies in that game. Okay. Which is actually really neat because the movie is all about the fact that McLean is, like, keeping track of the terrorists he's, that he's fighting and how many are gone, how many are still left. So right. it's kind of neat that they did that. Um, and I really kind of wish more games would embrace that idea. Of, like, I don't need to kill 500 NPCs. Give me like 15 boss level enemies to All deal right. with, and just like make make them actually make them count. Right. But there's right. a nice little Easter egg where you can go up onto the rooftop um, early in the story, and if you run up to the edge of the roof and hit like the A button. McLean will say, there's no way I'm going to jump off this roof. I'm not, I'm not that crazy. Really? Yet. So yeah, if you try to go to that bit before it happens in the story, he'll straight up say, no, I'm not doing that. Oh, wow. So, I think I missed yeah, out. Yeah, it's I I missed it's out. also a terrible game. It's, it's not fun <laughs> to play. Um, it is, it ha it's, it's, it's terrible in a really interesting way. Okay. So Two diehard games I want to talk about. Um, one is a trilogy, and one is this it was an arcade game. Oh, so we yes. have Die Hard the arcade game, which is based off the first game. I mean, the first movie. Yeah. And that game is freaking, I it's freaking awesome because they have not only are you beating up enemies, you're going through all this crazy explosions trying to like you know escape or get to the, the main villain, but it has these quick time events, and um, yeah. you'll be you'll be running or whatever like that, and an enemy will peep his head around the corner and they'll say punch. And if you punch him. The, the way you punch the guys, like it, it lifts them off his feet. The camera angles are so funny in that game, how it looks. And the way you pop them, <laughs> dude, it's like insane. And um, that game is really a lot of fun. Now, the other game, which is Die Hard Trilogy, uh, yes. that one is based off the first three movies, and they all play differently. So the first one has you um, trying to, like, uh, like in the tower, you know, I think you're, like, defusing bombs or something like that. I, I can't remember, but you're taking it out enemies, and it's okay. Then yeah, you get yeah. to the second, get to, get to the second game. It's it's a gallery shooter, pretty much like a rail shooter. Yeah. So you're at the airport. That was actually kind of fun, but the hit yeah. detection on some of the enemies is kind of weird. Now the third yeah. one, which is my favorite one, that's yeah. the one with Samuel Jackson. <laughs> they got this uh this version of music playing uh by Public Enemy. It's like a remix of Public Enemy, but if they remix it enough to where they wouldn't get, get like copyright claimed or whatever like right. that. It's <laughs> great. But basically, you're driving in the car trying to defuse bombs in New York, and um you have to run them over. 
to, to defuse them. <laughs> it looks so we silly. Like we know how that's how it works. Yeah, and it, 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 and the funny part is, like, if you hit any pedestrians on the on the on the road, yeah, your windshield wipers will have blood on them. And then he said, and then like you'll have Samuel Jackson scared, say, You trying to aim for these people? And he'll you like he'll say yippee kaye. Like they'll, they'll yeah. have, have different dialogue like that in there, which is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so much fun. And um <laughs> I actually did a video on it years ago, which is hilarious. But yeah, no, those are the ones I would, those are actually I think are pretty that trilogy is decent, but the arcade right. game I consider probably the best diehard game ever. Yeah. That, what was I mean, that, that was what was it also that called? Was, that was a reskin, wasn't it? That was uh Dynamite Cop from Japan. I think there it was. It I think you did reskin it. Yeah, okay. Dynamite Decca or something like that. But right. what's crazy is because I, I played uh, I played Dynamite Cop too, and the main yeah. character's name, the Bruce Willis character's name, is Bruno. Bruno, yeah. Which <laughs> is like, hey, remember when Bruce Willis tried to be a, like try to be like a jazz musician or something? <laughs> um, but yeah. Oh man, that yeah. was. It's kind of neat that they did that because yeah, it was it's a fantastic game, but it's. The only other time I can think they did that was they made a Universal Soldier game that was basically they reskinned the game Turrican or Turrican. That's right. Wow. Yeah. 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 That's right. So you're basically Luke Devereaux fighting sci fi creatures and like giant head bad guys. Right. Um, right. I didn't know but that. yeah, it, oh. normally right. well, it happened the opposite. Like you'd have right. Kung Fu was basically wheels on meals. Yeah. Right. They're supposed to be wheels on meals, based off of wheels on meals. Uh, everybody watching right now, if you haven't noticed, we're just jumping around, so fuck it. We're trying to go by era. Fuck it. We're going to jump all we're the way around here. Best, and we're going to fail yeah. at it, but you're going to enjoy it anyway. Now, Reggie, wasn't there a Die Hard Trilogy 2? Yeah, Any that one was horrible. Um, okay. they, they were basically trying to bank off the success of the first one, because the first one became a greatest hit. So, right. you know, become a greatest hit, sold well. They said, let's make another one. And it just didn't like. They tried to add some story to it, which was like lame. Like you, you could tell, like it was like a budget game. It's yeah, okay, yeah. but it's nothing like you say. Hey, let's play Die Hard Trilogy Two if a friend comes over. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, is that based know? in Vegas? Yeah, something people like in Vegas or something like that. Yeah. Right, right. And I think it was a die, there was a Die Hard game for PC, but I don't know if that was any good though. Did you ever play uh, Die Hard Vendetta for uh, like a PS2 GameCube? Yeah, pretty. No, was that any good? It's okay. It's interesting, but they they needed to polish it a bit more to make it actually stand out. They rushed it, you could tell, but it had potential to be good though. It has its own story, which is pretty cool, but it just the, like there's certain issues in there, like detections and stuff like that, and how difficult mm. it can get. It's kind of weird sometimes. So yeah, but right. they got Reginald Vell Johnson to be in that game. <laughs> <laughs> they, they got Carl. Uh, Lins, yeah, he he appears in it. Like wow. his likeness. Oh, man. That's amazing. That's now, so amazing. is it worse than is it worse than a good day to die hard though? Because that movie was just I never saw it. Don't that's the, I saw I saw the fourth one and that was it. They I just I saw reviews for the fifth one. And they were saying like it was like Bruce Willis didn't want to be there or something yeah. like that. Or just, yeah. yeah. Well, Guy Courtney was there. Why would he want to be there? <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, let's keep it going here. The last one for '80s that we have listed as of right now. Is Batman? That's the big one right there. Oh, okay. Batman. Sunsoft, for, Batman. For, yeah, yeah, that was great. That was great. Reggie, was that the first time you you could like wall jump like before Ninja yeah. Gaiden was doing that and Shinobi? I you could kind of wall Gaiden. jump, right? Or maybe Ninja well, Gaiden did that first. Then. I think they came out the same year though. I, okay. but I, know, I think yeah, I think Ninja Gaiden came out before. Oh, so tell, yeah, I think it came out before Batman. But anyways, yeah, that's the first one you go wall jump. That was a good game. It was difficult for me. I was young when I played that one, so I had yeah. a hard time. Yeah, I remember. I remember Batman being purple in that game, which I thought was weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they, ran out, they ran out of colors or something. Yeah, yeah. But if long, you got to, you have to really get used to the, the mechanic of the wall jumping in that game because you're going to need it because you're platforming right. and stuff. But once you get used to that, yeah, it's a pretty solid game. It has a really good soundtrack to it. Yes, so, very impressive. Yes. Yeah, I remember the cinemas yeah. were from the movie too, which was dope seeing mm -hmm. that back in the day. And mm -hmm. but the game was the game just kind of did its own thing. Yeah. But but Batman for Sega Genesis was legit, bro. That was legit. Have you ever played that one, Reggie? Based off the Sunsoft, my Sunsoft. I don't know who made. It might have been based off the Batman first game. movie, but it might have been. I think, I think Sunsoft made that one, but it was graphically enhanced. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really yeah. play that one much. I, I only saw Dude. it a couple of times. But that, that one's, one's really 
That one's great because you get to play, you get to, I mean, it's like from the movie levels from the movie. You fight mm-hmm. into the you fight in the museum. You know, it's like they, they play around with with bosses and stuff like that. But the music's great. You have Batwing levels, uh, Batmobile yeah. levels from the from the original movie. Batman is amazing for Sega Genesis. The only the only nitpick I have with it is that it's really short. You can beat it like like that. But yeah, uh, if you guys haven't like played a, Batman like Sega arc- Genesis, it's yeah. it's good stuff. It's kind of like the arcade game then in a way because the Batman arcade game is a lot of, a lot of people yeah. don't know that exists. That one was actually pretty good. That um, might be the best one based off of the first movie. The first movie. I mean, oh yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. You know. I didn't check that one out. I didn't even know I didn't even know that was a thing. It was made by Atari out of all people too. You know, Atari really? was a Mark Hagen. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Copy that. All right, let's go to the 90s here kind of. All right, let's do Jurassic Park. Yeah, Jurassic <laughs> Park had a lot of different games. Uh, mm-hmm. I remember the ones for Sega Genesis were entertaining. Then one for Super Nintendo were good too, oh. right? Yeah. Was like, uh, yeah. Uh, so start with Super Nintendo one. It was like a top down like a game. I remember I, I had fun with that one. Um, the first Genesis one, I liked the whole effect when they're in the car and the dinosaur. They could see him in the rear view, <laughs> and that was the cool effect back then. Uh, but I never got into that one. I actually got into a sequel. Which was like a like some kind of extra game. I forgot what it was called, but that one was freaking awesome. Um, but I think the Jurassic Park games, from what I remember, were pretty solid games for back then. Yeah, you know, and they were all pretty different too, because you had like on the Nintendo side, it was all top down, and the Sega yeah. side, it was all like side scrolling. And I would argue that the Super Nintendo one was probably the better game. Yeah, but. The, everybody has the memories of the Sega Genesis one because that special effect you get to be the raptor. Yeah, I mean, it really right. comes down to they understood what was so cool about Jurassic Park was the dinosaurs and especially the raptor. And like, yeah. just the fact that the game starts with the, the a T Rex saying Sega, <laughs> like, okay, all right, they, they, they know their audience, they know they know who's coming to these games. <laughs> yeah, I remember those were pretty fun. Pretty, and pretty fun. Then they, the, made their, this, they made this weird kind of sequel called uh, Jurassic Park 2 The Chaos Continues. That's the one, yeah. like, that's Super Nintendo one, right? That was, yeah, that came out on all of them. Oh, like Super huh. NES, Game Boy, Genesis. And it was, I played the Game Boy one, uh, where he basically plays this, like, adorable little, like, Chibi Grant. And the the one for the Super Nintendo is frustratingly hard because every every dinosaur is a bullet sponge, and right. but it's, oh, I, think I, it's, I remember this. It's like a side scroller shooter, like Contra. A little yeah, bit. I remember this. Yeah, they they tried to justify going back to the island, so they somehow came up with a dumber plot than any of the Jurassic Park sequels could. Right? Wasn't there Reggie? Wasn't there a rare unreleased over here in the states? Uh, Jurassic Park action game for Genesis and the graphics were like really good. Not that remember I remember. That? Uh, not that I remember. I know that the one that we're talking about right now, um, The Chaos Continues was really impressive at the time because of the voice acting in the game. So it had these oh, cinematics yeah. and everything that you know it, it gets overlooked today but that game was actually pretty amazing how they did that. So I actually was at a convention recently and I meant to pick the game up but I forgot about it so I had to go Pick it up at a ne- another convention I go to, but uh, yeah, I don't remember any like rare Jurassic Park game coming out uh, to America. Oh, um, it was called. I found it. It's called um, the Lost World Jurassic Park for PS One. No, for Genesis, bro. Really? And, oh, yeah. Is it uh, here, those- I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys a, a picture here while we're still talking. I'm gonna upload it in Streamyard okay. so you can see it. Yeah, yeah. this was a, uh, this was a. Uh, Late. Yeah. Like the really, but, came out in but, yeah, but the graphics, I mean, look this, look at this. Oh hmm. wow, yeah. Yeah, the graphics were really good for Sega a Genesis. Late, a late release. Yeah, it was really pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, this okay. is awesome. We're going down memory. Is, when you say rare, do you mean like it's expensive or just like just it might be because it was never released here in the States? Huh. Okay. But you could probably find an emulation, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you can find an emulation. Uh but yeah, uh, here's one more. Hold on, I got one more photo to show you guys, and then uh, we'll keep it rocking and rolling here. Uh, what is the other one here? I already did Batman. True Lies. Let's talk about that one. Yes. True Lies for Super Nintendo. I unfortunately never got to play it, but I saw how it looked, and the game looks freaking awesome. You know, that was a great movie. I'll never forget the yeah. scene. 
in the car, you know, backhand. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. That uh, movie, the game. This movie is so great. The game, I, I played it briefly. One of the things that popped out of me as being really weird is the beginning of the game starts off in that chateau he's trying to infiltrate in the beginning of the movie. But they yeah. didn't create a specific bespoke character sprite for Harry Tasker. So he's literally walking around with a freaking desert eagle like this, just like checking, like walking around all these rich wow. people. Like it's a, like it's a, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, how, how, how is this man not being tackled by security right now? <laughs> because he's Arnold. But yeah, I, re I remember True Life for, for SNES was dope. I remember that was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. But here's some more photos of that game. So right here, I think you're uh, Jeff Goldblum and Alan, Dr. Alan Grant on this Is raft. Jeff Goldblum along. tacked out? It looks like he's wearing like a, a cool sci-fi visor. Yeah, it looks like it. But yeah, th look at this screenshot right here. I mean, look at this. You're on the hanging out on the side of the vehicle shooting dinosaurs. <laughs> this is Sega Genesis, bro. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's another one where you're on a, I think you're on a motorcycle or a vehicle chasing and shooting down dinosaurs in the woods. So, yeah, Lost World for yeah. for Sega Genesis. Hopefully, uh, I don't know, Reggie, you got to hunt it down now. Emulation. You got to try to do a video on it. Or get a repro card or something like that. You know, yeah, there you, you yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. All right. Now, Last Action Hero. I don't remember hearing good things about Last Action Hero. This on is the polar on all platforms. Yeah, talk about that. Good movie. Okay. Really good movie. But, man, that game is absolute trash. <laughs> Wait, it's... you thought... Last Action Hero? Yeah. The game. Yeah. You said it was a good movie? I enjoyed it. <laughs> I Wow. I, I know it's a watch... controversial opinion, but I do enjoy it. Yeah. Well, it was, I remember people were saying any Arnold Schwarzenegger movie that's not one word is not a good movie. And that was like, Last Action Hero was like the first one that people started talking <laughs> about with that. Um, <laughs> I remember seeing it. I remember seeing it as a kid in the theaters. I remember nobody yeah. was in there. And I was like, why isn't anybody in here? Like, this is Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> but um, I need to go back and look at it again because I've only, only seen it once. Um, so yeah. maybe I'll have a different opinion. It but gets, I've never played the game. Yeah. It get, the movie gets better with. Repeated viewing. I, I, like, I like it a lot game. more now. I like it a lot more now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever have you ever played a game where you're literally playing for the first level and nothing works the way it should? Like you try to jump and there's like this long delay because it has to go through this very long animation of him like getting ready to jump off the ground. Oh, it wow. plays. It doesn't look. It, it's a Super Nintendo game that looks like it's just a souped up like NES game. The controls are terrible. The music is terrible. I never got through the first level, and apparently there are multiple different versions of this thing. There's like oh. Super Nintendo, NES, Genesis. I think for like the, the portables, all trash. Like spread, yeah. spread the misery, guys. Right. Well, that, Reggie, I got a theory. I got a theory why your theater was empty when you saw mm -hmm. the movie, because this movie came out the same year Jurassic Park did. We were all watching Jurassic Park, <laughs> and also it, it came out the same year as um the other the Pelican. No, not the Pelican. The the uh, what's that movie with uh, Nicolas Cage and Tom Cruise? Like you know, you don't the truth or something like that. You can't. Oh, you did then. Yeah, was that ninety four as well? Uh, it was ninety. I think it was ninety three. It came out the same year as the Super Mario Brothers movie. Everybody was going to see that shit. <laughs> that, that, that's why. That's why Last Action Hero was empty. Everybody was going to see Bob Hoskins. I saw that movie in theater, and my dad so never. Sorry. My dad, my dad never let me forget choose that I took him to go see yeah. Super Mario Brothers. Preston, you never get to choose the movie ever again. <laughs> I still to that, this day love that movie, man. Like I had a great time with it. You know what's you know what's funny, Reggie? Believe it or not, I have been getting requests for us to do with you and Joel and everybody else to do a versus episode. With the original Super Mario Brothers movie, the first one, and the most recent Super Mario Brothers movie, and believe it or not, there's ninety three. Believe it or not, there's a good argument. I know it's stunning. It's just shocking. Everybody watching this it's video, not, right now. I'm not shocked at all because I, I I think I could know what that argument is, but yeah, I think that would there, be a good. Topic. There's a there's a good argument of why the original one's better than the most mm -hmm. recent one. The most recent one, huge hit, <laughs> crowd pleaser. But you know we, we'll have you'll have we, we'll discuss it during that versus episode. We'll I, I do have a an interest, a fun aside about that movie. Okay. So about ten, oh god, over a little over ten years ago, I was working on a web series called Mario Warfare, 
which was shot in North Carolina. Yes. It's basically, imagine Super Mario Brothers if it was Call of Duty in a parody. And, Reggie, you got to see this, bro. Yeah. You got to see this the short film he made, a little short film. Oh, it's no, it's like a feature, martial it's like feature length. Like, oh, Toad, yeah, that's right. Like, Jolly and Fat, the Mario Brothers attacked out. Luigi's yeah. hilarious. Forward, forward, Reggie, the link, James, when we're done here. Definitely. You can see it. Yeah. But hilarious. Was, like, we're out there filming, and, you know, it's, it's North Carolina, so it's hot. We're all tired. And I'm sitting on the most uncomfortable bench I've ever sat on in my life. Yeah. And Matt Sumner, the guy who plays Mario in the series, walks up to me, like, you know what you're sitting on? Like, uh, no, I don't. I know. And he's like, that was in the Super Mario Brothers movie in 93. Apparently, the owner of the property worked in the art department for that movie, which was also shot in North Carolina. And yeah. there's a, he has a picture of Dennis Hopper standing on the bench. So literally then 20 years later, wow, this guy is now helping with Mario Warfare. Wow, so that's, basically that's every 20 years, awesome. he gets involved with Mario something. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. Monkey! Yeah, yeah, we got to do a versus episode. <laughs> I think that's going to be epic. We, we got to do that for sure. Well, there was another movie I think came out in 1993 that did, I think it did a little bit better than Last Action Hero, which I think was kind of considered a bomb. But unfortunately, it didn't do as well as they wanted. And that's Cliffhanger. Did you guys play the Cliffhanger games? Um, we're, we're talking about the movie, but uh, I think that came out in 93 too. But Cliffhanger I video games for Sega Genesis. Uh, and SNES. So, did you guys play those? Yeah, yes, yeah. so I played the Sega CD one. Dude. And yeah, but go ahead. I I liked it because I liked the movie so much. I, mean, I think it might have like kind of like messed with my opinion of it because I, right. I like John Lithgow. Like when he plays a villain, dude, in the feet was so over the top in that movie. Yeah. man. like yeah. he got yeah. shot. They say, "What do we do with him?" He said, "We'll get him to a hospital." And they threw him out the chop off the cliff or the helicopter. This <laughs> <laughs> stuff it was hilarious. I'm like, dude, yeah. this guy is awesome. But yeah. um, seeing stuff like that when I was a kid, I, I just like. Seeing the game, I would, I, I, I would, I'd probably be biased about it. It might not be a good yeah. game, but I thought it was pretty good back in the day. Did they use clips? Was it a FMV game with clips? It, they used clips. Movie? I think they used clips to reward you. Like the intro had had like the movie. It was really grainy though, you know. But right. uh, still, mm -hmm. it had that trailer from the movie and everything like that. Yeah. I don't remember if they reward you with clips as you progress through the game, or right. if you uh, FMV at the end. But right, I just remember just loving it because you know John Lookout was. <laughs> I thought he's gonna be the bad guy in the game. He's, so. he's amazing, yeah. And yeah. and Michael Rooker, yeah. Michael Rooker was also in the movie. So his scene, this scene is so classic, man. Because it, it, now the beginning of the movie is scary as hell. Because once you see like things aren't going well, I was actually you t I still get terrified watching that scene. But <laughs> yeah. if you look at Michael Rooker while he's pulling the rope, and the guy next to him, the guy has a big smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> they realize they're doing the movie. <laughs> it's so funny, dude. Like you go back and look at that clip, man. And the guy's just he's smiling, and as the scene gets more dramatic, you can see him laughing. <laughs> oh, <man>. oh <laughs> I gotta go back and watch this now. This, to, is, this, you, is, this is hilarious. We gotta watch it after this, man. You, it'll be it'll be classic. <laughs> we we'll all have a laugh. But so, um, yeah. wasn't this Nest like a Double Dragon style game though? It's a beat 'em up. The, yeah. The, yeah, of yeah. all the weird of all the weird yeah. types of games to make from cliffhanger. <laughs> you didn't make yeah. platformer. You made a right. you made a beat em up. Right, but I would say skip because I actually own the Sega CD game. I would say skip because the beat em up part is generic. Skip mm -hmm. the Genesis and SNES version, but the Sega CD version is worth buying because yeah, it had it still had the but it still had the beat em up game in there, mm -hmm. but and it, but it had the FM, FMV clips from the film, which was cool. But it had these cool like snowboarding down the av like avalanche. Oh, I forgot about down that. levels, oh. and the graphics were really good, like really good, showing how mm -hmm. Sega CD unfortunately wasn't pushed to its you know uh, mm -hmm. what's the word I'm looking for, uh, Reggie? It wasn't uh, Full potential. a hardware. Potential. Yeah, uh -huh. the potential, the hardware wasn't taken. Well, they, they well the, the, a lot of their games were rushed. Like movie games yeah. are always rushed, yeah. obviously, yeah. because yeah. they want to make a deadline. Oh, we got to yeah. make this. Had the game out by the time the movie's here, yeah. And developers don't get the time they need to to make these games, so it's unfortunate. I think, right? Not trying to go off the topic here, but I think a lot of developers got to probably make good movie games around. I want to say the PS2 era, and right, next, right, right, next right. to the PS3 era, I think around that time you start to see good movie games. Yes, which we're going to get to here. It does it does improve? Right. Yeah. But before we move on, there was one more cool thing, Reggie. I remember in Sega CD's Cliffhanger, the movie soundtrack was during the levels. They mm. had the movie, the actual score from the movie is yep. played during uh, the game. 
So that Q that's sound. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, old good old cliffhanger. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's keep it going here. Now, the Super Star Wars games. Ooh. Man, uh, Reggie, Very talk about those. I just remember those being awesome and then hard as fuck. They were hard <laughs> as hell, man. Like, no polish. I mean, they look great, you know, yeah. because obviously they were premiering for Super Nintendo, but they were just too difficult to, to enjoy, you know, for, at least for me. So I didn't really play them much. I put I put them down and just went back to Mario World, you know. Yeah. Um, and then I remember a, a friend played it, and he was good at games, and even he put it down. He's like, man, yeah. I, I don't think we picked those games back up until, like, the Game Genie came out. And then we mm. were kind of play, we were playing with power, I was like a little cheating right. power, and then you were kind of getting past some hard parts. But <laughs> it just wasn't fun unless you were a super hardcore like Star Wars player, and maybe yeah. then you could like it. But I just couldn't get into either of them. I don't know how I did it, but I beat the first one. Wow! Wow! I I, I have you no. Know, I still to this day I'm like, how did I do that? Yeah. Um, but I, what I love about it is how they basically are like. How do we how do we maximize the gameplay here? Let's just make Luke a violent psychopath. Because <laughs> literally, it's like, oh, we're gonna I'm gonna it's like a murder my way across the desert, find C three PO, kill a whole bunch of scorpions, and the sar- you fight the Sarlacc pit at the first at the end of the first level. Then yeah. you kill like a hundred Jawas in a speeder seat, a speeder bike on your speeder bike to get to the sand crawler. Kill more Jawas to go up the sand crawler inside. Fight a lava monster, and that's when you save R two D two. Like, it's it literally takes so many liberties with the story, and yet it still also kind of follows the story of the film, but it does so in a way of like, well, what if what if Luke met Chewbacca at the you know the door to the cantina, and Chewbacca's like, I'm going to take you to meet my friend Han, but first these motherfuckers got to die, and you just like <laughs> kill your way across the cantina. Like, it's fun. It doesn't. The dozens of aliens and there's people in the background just like having drinks watching you do it right right didn't that didn't um one of the games or maybe all of them did it where you could like pick what song did you want to play the game to like a level you could change the music to another level's music because I, I could have sworn i could have i could have sworn my a buddy of mine he was playing a, an x-wing uh level and he had while playing the X-ring level, he had on the background. He had that. Maybe that was a game genie thing. That'd be amazing. Maybe I just remember laughing. I was busting up. But yeah, cool graphics. It's just those games were hard. It's too hard. Way too hard. Now, now we have a guilty pleasure, and I. This is my guilty pleasure. My guilty pleasure. But I regret selling this game. I wish I still had it. I had the big case, PS1 case, jewel case for it, and I wish I didn't sell it, but Street Fighter the movie! <laughs> I am going to kick Bison's ass so hard that the next Bison <laughs> wannabe is going to feel it. Let's talk about that, James. Oh, man. So, there there are these two really, really great uh, oral histories of the making of the movie and the making of the game, and in both cases, it's a total train wreck. Yeah, and I don't know how anything use, uh, usable came from it. Yeah, but yeah, like there's two different Street Fighter movie games. Yeah, uh, the arcade one is very Mortal Kombat, made by an American company. Mm-hmm. But while the American company was getting all like the the, the mocap sessions with the actors, there's a bunch of ta- there's a bunch of Capcom people like, all right, now get this move. We need this move. Get this move too. Like we're, we're, we're for what for our game. <laughs> um, this was a, at one point. This was positioned as Street Fighter Three. Mm. Oh, That's wow. mind blowing <laughs> to think about that. If that had turned out better, that yeah. would be Street Fighter Three. Wow, amazing! But yeah, but like, yeah, they like they like revamped the the game engine and controls for mm-hmm. the home release. The PS4 yeah, it was almost like a different game in a way. Yeah. Um, Thank goodness they did it because the arcade game wasn't really great yeah. at all. It um, had the graphics, really good, but that was it. Yeah, it had the yeah, graphics. Yeah. It had Akuma in it, and Ernie yeah. Bay Sr. was Akuma. That was yeah, and they, they brought Sawada in it, which was a new character kind of in the movie. He was in yeah. the game. Um, yeah. I love the movie, but we'll talk about <laughs> I it. I do too, man. If, I mean, if you watch great it like bad. a comedy, if you look at it as a comedy, man, it's yeah. even better. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I remember bad. trying to watch it as a kid and trying to take it seriously and i was like dude yeah. 
Yeah, but it actually has a sequel. A lot of people don't know about the Street Fighter and like cartoon that used to come on Saturday mornings was was a oh. sequel to the movie. So that was, was it. That was kind of, it was supposed to be a sequel. It is yeah, a direct it sequel. Based, it, was, it was based. Yeah, it was like based off of it. Or it, yeah, it was a direct sequel because the characters oh. played portrayed tra- their same roles that they did in the movies. Like Ken and okay. Ryu were still thieves and stuff like that. So oh wow. Wow. Captain Sawada is in the cartoon. Also, he's in the cartoon. He hates Guile, oh. and yeah, it's, it's is that it's the great. is that the same cartoon where Bison's like, yes, yes, yes. it's that. Oh, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. yeah, but yeah, you know, I just had fun playing with it because it played like Street Fighter. I just it's had a terrible game. Fun it's just kind of an awkward version of Super Street Fighter Two. Yeah, that's all yeah. it is. You know. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. But it's all it's uh, Raul Julie is the goat. He is the goat yeah. in that movie. He did that movie for his kids, yeah. and he just had an absolute blast being over the top. And the it was Tuesday line. It, yeah, it, it, it has to go it down. It is one of the greatest movie line, movie villain lines in history. No yeah, matter what that, you think about that movie, people still go, "Well, that, for you, <laughs> for me, you know, it was it Tuesday. was just Tuesday." Yeah, yeah that whole I killed, scene. When I killed your father. Yeah, that that, that whole scene it's with so him and good. Chuck Lee. Was great, and then the, yeah. the, the scene after it, where the Street Fighters burst, burst in and try to attack Bison, but he he backs behind this case, this gla- this glass wall, or whatever like that, yeah. and they're like he he gasses them, and they're all yeah. there and they're choking there, and he goes to this picture of Bison like in the smoke, and he just show him this laughing, and he all <laughs> do his face when he's laughing is epic, dude. Like a lot of people don't talk about it, like how he looked, like he looked <laughs> insane, dude. And I I feel like that's the what, what they got for the new Bison, and how he's always smiling like that, yeah, like like yeah, yeah. crazy with smiles, like. <laughs> I think they got that from Raw Julia because Bison never smiled like that until that movie came out. Oh, like yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I actually interviewed way back in the early days of podcasting. I actually interviewed Andrew Briniarski, who played Zangief mm-hmm. in the film. Huh. If you want to see at up to this point, out of all the years I've been podcasting, that episode with me interviewing Andrew has got to be the absolute bat shit insane wildest episode ever right. that that episode deserves thirty thousand views okay even more <laughs> you gotta watch it it's it's insane but anyway that's a that's another topic for another day but yeah it's a oh, good pleasure one, one more episode. line from the movie that i'll never oh, forget yeah. it. so yeah. there's a there's a point like kind of towards the end of the movie and a uh, sagat he does something that um uh, that uh i can't remember he, that he messed up on something, right? And then he was all like embarrassed. And, and Bison looked at him and said, I guess you didn't see that, did you? Oh and that line was great too. <laughs> you wonder like how much of that was in the script and how much of that was Raul Julia's yeah. written yeah. on script. Yeah, yeah. And don't forget the, the other funny, hilarious scene where they're, they're watching the television. And like they're watching a monitor, all the villains. Oh, and, and then yeah, there's a bomb. You know, you see the guy, the good guys with the bomb <laughs> pushing it towards the, yeah. you know, the, and and Zenki goes, "Quick, change the channel." You know. Yeah, I, mean, I remember. Fucking hilarious. I, I remember when my stepdad was me. And my stepdad were watching it, like like yeah. because it came on cable TV, and he looked, he looked, he'd start yeah. busting up laughing. I'd never heard, seen him laugh like that before. Yeah. That line was like perfect, like change the yeah. channel. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's it's just too God. much fun, too much fun. And my a buddy of mine, shout out to stuntman uh, filmmaker Alex Chung. Rubbed it in my face. He bought the Street Fighter the movie Steelbook Blu-ray. Oh, with the dollar. It, it came with a a dollar from Bisonica. It came with a oh. a, a, a Bison dollar a bison with dollar? Ralph Julia's face on it. And I'm man. just like, why am I not buying this right now? I need to buy this. Oh man, this is amazing. I, I need, well, I need, I need that dollar. Um, Dude, is it? Yeah, like I, the making of the game still has some really great just. They have like the most bizarre images, like 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 distinguished Native American actor West Studi dressed as the god, holding a box, pretending it's a fireball. Yeah. Has no, I've, I've seen an interview. He had no idea what the hell was going on. <laughs> like what, why, but why am I doing this? <laughs> um, I guess like oh. Van Damme showed up, yeah, and it was just a colossal pain in the ass. He <laughs> he did the moves too fast and yeah. wouldn't slow down. He left early, so. Most of what you see of Guile is actually his stunt double. Right, uh, right, right, right. Um, right. Yeah. but yeah, like they wanted to put a blonde wig on the on Ken to make him look more like the game, and the <laughs> makers, the Capcom's like, no, don't do that. Um, <laughs> just should have did it. Add to the comedy. Fuck it. 
fuck it at this point. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're we could talk all day about Street Fighter the movie, but let's let's get back to to these games here. Uh, all right, Golden Eye for Nintendo sixty four. Come on, uh, when that came out, that was insane. Mm-hmm. Or is I it agree. overrated, Reggie? Is it overrated or is it legit? No, it's legit. At least for the time, you know, first person games. Yeah, I think around the time started to get there. That was the first game that kind of started to get them more popular. I was, I would say, because yeah. before mm-hmm. that, you had the like boomer sh- shooters and all that stuff. Golden Eye was tight. I remember when we played that game, and I remember when you hit the pause button, it goes to his watch and it starts playing this epic like James Bond music. Man, it's so chill and relaxed. I was like, dude, this is insane. And when you push pause, it shows him go to the watch and it zooms yeah. in on it. It's it's great. Um, it was very, the levels were very open and fun. You, I mean, yeah. you had your opportunity to sneak around and do things and do the objectives and everything like that. But of course, where the game like really shined was the multiplayer. Yeah. I mean, if you get yeah. four people playing and, yeah. you know, certain weapons, remote mines were insane because everybody would plant those everywhere, just blowing people yeah. up. But yeah. insanely fun game, man. Yeah. Uh, I think it was definitely one of the top games of its time. So, yeah, definitely not overrated. And it followed the movie pretty well. Oh yeah, it did. In terms of yeah, level, they, yeah, it did. I want to say they the team got to go to the set. Like, th- so before Goldeneye came out, these like video game tie-ins were kind of viewed the same way like a lunchbox would be. Like, like ah, whatever, just make something where the mer- it'll, it'll help us squeeze a little more money out of the property. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this team of newbies, by the way, got access to blueprints, set pictures, the script, all this stuff. And that's why, like, when you play the game and you go and watch the movie, in some cases, it is one to one, the game and the set. Right. But there's this really great documentary called Golden Era. I think it's on Tubi right now, and it's okay. about the making of Goldeneye. Oh, and man. it was a team of total newbies. Most of them had never made a game before. Um, it went. It started as a Super Nintendo game. Went way over time. Came out two years after the movie. Yeah. Um, the multiplayer, like. Their bosses told them, don't try to put a multiplayer in this game. Wow. And they put a multiplayer in the game like two anyway. weeks before it went to launch. And if it no. hadn't happened like that, GoldenEye would not be what it is today. Right. Yeah. It's really rickety. By I tried to play it recently. It's it's very rickety. It's a lot easier to play Perfect Dark. Right. But yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it just, yeah. it's, if, I would argue it's the only influential movie based game ever. Yeah, fuck you guys out there who play fucking odd job. Fuck you guys who plays yeah. odd, pick odd job. But my buddy would always pick odd job, and he would crouch. Odd job's already short, so if you crouch, you can't see him when he's going around. So he would go around just n- keep knifing us in the fucking n- in the nards, and he but would kill shout all. Shout out us. to the heroes who played his jaws, or Baron, yeah. or that that Baron guy with the giant hat. Yeah. Like you, you weren't afraid of being a massive target. You were, right, you were right, that right. good, or you were just that stupid. Uh, anyway, let's keep it going here. All right. Oh, James's favorite, The Crow City of Angels. Oh, God. Your favorite uh, game, James. No. Hey, you want to talk about bad things that are called The Crow? <laughs> um, the Crow City of Angels. Imagine it kind of plays, it controls a bit like Resident Evil, but it's a brawler. Yeah. Okay. It's- and right. who, I, I really wonder, who thought that was a good idea? <laughs> who, like, who took one look, oh, well, we, we could totally make this brawler thing. Yes. But instead of tank making control like a 3D, a proper 3D game, we're going to make it control like tank controls. Yeah. yeah. PS1 had a lot of experimental games on it, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I, I saw Angel. I saw footage of it and I was like, "Oh, dude, this looks." This it's looks so generic painful. because you're, yeah, you you've seen the crow. He's very mysterious. He's not like going around yeah. like walking around beating people up. He'll he'll do some stealth beat you, mm-hmm. beat you up, but he's not gonna just walk around just you know where he's. Yeah, it was insane. Like I don't know what they were thinking with that one, <laughs> but they thought it was <laughs> sell. Because they thought the game would. Me. They thought the movie would sell the game, so they're like, "Oh, yeah. just do this," and yeah, it was oh, horrible, <laughs> horrible. <laughs> Let's like skip every, I don't think okay. two toes down. Yeah, that's how bad it is. Two toes <laughs> two, down. Two toes down. <laughs> oh man. Uh speaking of absolutely atrocious movies, and I reviewed this way back in the day. This was definitely on the Is It Really That Bad episode. And this is the first time I actually agreed. One of the rare times I actually agreed with the critic score. 
Zero percent. Ballistic X versus Sever is fucking horrible. It's one of the mm -hmm. worst movies I've ever seen. And uh, I had no idea there was a game, James, until you told me. I was like, what? No, there are two games. Two games? Two games. What? This is a neat one. Okay. Apparently, um, they were the, the company, this a company called Crawfish Interactive, um, was hired wow. to make a Game Boy Advance first person shooter based on this really cool, this amazing upcoming movie called X versus Sever. Yeah. Now, I, I, I know that. I actually own those games. Okay, now I recognize them. Sorry. Yeah. And the, the, the first game came out before the movie because the game, the production went perfectly fine, but the movie got delayed because they couldn't get their act together. So they're like, well, we have this really good game, and the Game Boy Advance is launching around that time. They just released it. They're like, it just comes out. And it's really cool because it is very much you either play as X or Sever, right. and you encounter each other. So if you play as X, the first level, you're like running through and you're occasionally encountering Sever. But if you play as Sever, you see that whole level from her perspective. Hmm. So it's the same. So you're, you're in direct conflict with this other character. And it's really kind of, it, it's really neat what they did. It's, it's plays pretty well. Yeah. It's a little rough, you know, yeah, GBA yeah, yeah. first year. Yeah. And then they finally got the movie done. And by that point, they made a second game that came out alongside the movie. I would argue in some ways it was better than the first. In some ways, the first was more interesting. But the movie came out, landed like a wet fart in church, and that was the end of all of it. Like, they were Reggie, supposed to have a Reggie, PS2 game. Reggie, did you play those games? Yeah, I own them. Uh, I was going to say, with the second game, they even had soloettes ready for the, the main actors, but I guess there mm -hmm. was some kind of, they wanted more money. So you can see the soloettes of Antonio Banderas and um, Lucy, 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 Lou. Lucy Lou. Lucy Lou. Lucy Lou. On the cover, you can know it's them, but they had to like blur them out because I guess they didn't work out money to be on the cover. Um, they're very, I think their games actually push the Game Boy Advance a bit. You know, it's a okay. 32 bit system. I like them, you know, okay. but um, I'm sure yeah, they're better uh, than the movie. They're better than the movie. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The first one was literally being compared to GoldenEye before it came out. Really? And it's like, imagine GoldenEye, but if it played kind of like Wolfenstein 3D, mm -hmm. huh. that's pretty much what, what X versus Sever was. Interesting, interesting. Copy that. Now, this is one of the greatest movie licensed video games of all time. I loved it. I have it for Xbox, but it's on PS2 as well. And it's on, uh, you know, digitally, you can get it on the PlayStation Store or whatnot. Warriors come out to play. Yay. Yo, that game is the fucking shit. And it, yeah. it's, 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 it hurts that it didn't do gangbusters. You know, especially around the time where people were like, movie licensed games, 90% of them suck. And then no one played the fucking Warriors. I'm like, dude, this is, yeah. this is a travesty. And Rockstar, and Rockstar was the one that put it together. Um, yeah. The promotion for the game was pretty top notch at the time, I remember. I yeah. remember they even made an arcade game for it and that they did it like giveaways for. It. So there's a, probably, there's a couple arcade games based off the Warriors Whoa. out there. Um, I didn't know that. It's based off a mini arcade, a mini game in itself. Like it's a beat em right. up Warriors game inside of it. Not the 3D oh, one. I remember we that. All know. Okay, yeah. I remember that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. But that game was awesome because it's a part of the lore. I mean, it's officially yeah. a part of the Warriors story, like how they came together, how they joined the crews, how they went up against the other games, like the boppers and everything like that. Yeah. Um, it's and they got the voice actors back for it too. That did the like uh, some the ones that came back, one of them passed away. Uh, I think <laughs> Rembrandt has passed away, but everybody a lot most of them came back to do do the voices, which yeah. was nice. Even yeah. Cleon and all people, he got he got like acts in, in the first few minutes of the movie right. and he came yeah. back but he has a stronger role in the game though because yeah. you see how everything comes together so very so well put together so the events good. of the movie make up the final level of the game right yeah yeah which is yeah. really it's very cool. intense too like you feel the tense like you're being stalked by the other gangs like the turbo acs that that whole section is crazy yeah. the baseball yeah. fury section and then you lose members like you, you lose ajax which sucks i always forget it losing ajax in the movie man i felt like he he should have been towards the end, but they yeah, he got out of there. So like, speaking man. of speaking of Ajax, um, they uh, temporarily released the Warriors in a small theater down in Hollywood. And me and my buddy, this is way back. Me and my buddy went to go see it, and there was a huge line because you know Warriors fans showed up. Mm -hmm. And what was cool there, they had a Q and A, and they had um the actress that was in the film. Um, I forgot who else was there. The, the name skips me right now, but Ajax was there. James Remar, 
who I ended up meeting later at a convention. I got my picture with him, and he's he's a fucking G. Uh, mm -hmm. They were talking about the video game then, you know, how mm -hmm. the game is, was so good. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, that crazy. was a nice, fun moment, uh, seeing Ajax. James Remar, man. Yeah. Raiden. That's right. Raiden yeah. from Mortal Raiden Kombat too. Annihilation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i never forget that, that line he had. Like, Raiden, will happen. you help us? He's like, I will pray for you. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Horrible. That but uh, so Raiden yeah. thoughts and prayered them. God. The movie didn't oh, happen. I don't know. I wanted to mention this, too. David David Patrick Kelly, I think that's his name, the guy that the Warriors come out to play. Yeah, he didn't come back and do his what he didn't do the voice of the of that in the movie, unfortunately. Okay. So it sounds kind of weird on that part, but um, okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but still, absolute phenomenal game. What, uh, what's the, sad is like people avoided it because it was a movie based game, but the 2000s yeah. was like that was an amazing decade, yeah, for movie based games. Like you had The Warriors, Lord of the Rings, Chronicles of Riddick, Scarface, oh. King Kong, The Godfather. Yeah. You know, yeah. for every bad one, there were also plenty of that. Plenty of them yeah. that were really, really fun to play. Oh yeah, yeah, man! The Lord of the Rings games were so good. It was two towers. It was hard as fuck that last level yeah. in two towers. Yeah, it but was. You, it was epic though. <laughs> oh, it was so good. The music from the movie and Return, uh, the the third film, Return of the King, so epic. Like, mm -hmm. just so good. Yeah, those are the two pinnacles I would put up there. If I was going to do yeah. like top 10 movie licensed games of all time, Lord of the Rings, those first two games were were good. And unfortunately, I never heard I never I've never played um Peter Jackson's King Kong James, but I heard it was great when it That came one out. is really good. Yeah, that's one of the, I would say one of the top <clears throat> movie games out there. They really yeah. put they did that one, a good job on that one. So, yeah. Now, um oh yeah, Chronicles of Riddick, one of the greatest movie based games as well, too. <laughs> Yeah, um, that game was fun. No, it needs to come back. They need to bring like they're we're getting a fourth Riddick movie. Yes, Let's finally. Wait, what? We are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Curious. That's confirmed. It's confirmed. Yeah, they they are, they're starting to film it, right? They're starting to film it now, right? Yeah. Yep. Dude, I didn't know that was confirmed. I thought. Well, I mean, Vin kinda... Diesel owns he owns Riddick now personally, so he can make whatever he wants. He just has to get the money. Let's go. He's got the he's got the writer, the same director. Uh, I mean, the writer for all mm -hmm. the movies is, is on board. So you know, nice. Yeah. Oh, God. I, I, does, does he still really own Tygon Studios, or is that over? I'm not really sure. Um, but um, I I, I kind of understand why he's starring so many Fast and the Furious movies and making all that big money. So he's got a yeah, production, build, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, he yeah. can make this movie if he wants to, and which is nice. how think, finally that's, not, that's yacht money. <laughs> um, so like this year, so one of the neat things that happened this year is all these like famous people they they made their passion projects by putting their own money into it. Like, um, was it uh, was it Oliver Stone or what? No, it was uh, Francis Ford Coppola sold part of his wine business so he could make Megalopolis. So, wow. 120 million dollars on a sci fi movie he's been trying to make for 20 years. Then, Whoa. uh, Kevin Costner did the same thing, he put a whole bunch of his properties up his collateral to make a, a, a series of four Westerns. So Vin yeah. Diesel, like at some point, is he going to be like, all right, I'm going to liquidate all his, all his bunch of stuff. I'm going to make the Riddick movie. I want to make, no one's going to tell me what to do with it. Yes. And I'm going to have the budget I need and all oh, of that. I, I'm, I'm so kinda, happy right now. I wonder if that'll ever happen, but yeah, no, they're, they're uh, working on it now. Okay. I think you guys still are. Do you guys still think there's enough Riddick fans out there? Because they it's been so no. long. I mean, we got <laughs> we got the last movie like, Riddick was ten years ago, and I thought they were going to do a sequel a couple years after that. But now yeah. here we are, ten years later. So no, they, but they got to do it smart, man, with the budget. Yeah, there, there, there's there's not a lot of Riddick fans, but there's a lot of Vin Diesel fans. Mm -hmm. So I think they'll come. Might, yeah, they'll see him. I mean, as long as it makes it look fucking badass and sick, dude, come up with a yeah. kick-ass trick, dude. We'll mm -hmm. we'll go. See it. I mean, the casuals will go see it. The story um, for it is looking pretty good. I mean, they're, they're okay. going to his origins, so it's like, yes. Okay. All right. All right. But yeah, Escape from Butcher Bay was an amazing, amazing yeah. video game for sure. Yeah. Um, but since we're talking about Vin Diesel here, <laughs> hold on a second. Uh, Reggie, have you played Fast and Furious Crossroads, which I'm oh. hearing is one of the greatest good bad games ever made, and now it's gone. It's extremely rare now. You, It's like is it is, been, that, is it is it delisted now? What's the term I'm looking? Is for that the now? one where on the cover where it has the guy jumping onto the other car while they're racing? Or 
It, it, it might I don't remember that one be... very well. I thought you were going to say the wheel man. <laughs> no, I I remember. You know, I actually have the wheel man. I love that game. <laughs> and I remember enjoying it. But no, Fast and Furious Crossroads came out for PC, PS4, Xbox One. That no, I heard that's I never... h- hilariously bad, but okay. fun, like good bad. And now you can't find it. It's gone. Wow. You can't find it anymore. They don't sell it anymore. So they, they're, they're trying to bury it. Yeah. You're going to pretend uh, it's never happened. Right. You go to any <laughs> any Dave and Buster's and the Fast and Furious arcade game is all. Yeah. There. Yeah. It's in my movie theater. It's like, what the hell? So it's called Fast and the Furious Crossroads. I think that's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. I see it. Okay. Yeah. 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 It got delisted. That's $5,000 okay. loose disc. <laughs> <laughs> you bastards. Oh, my goodness. Um, but uh, Minority Report is a great throwing dudes through windows simulator. <laughs> I've never this right played now. that full game. No, yeah, I, I got never... it on a PS and a PlayStation Magazine demo disc. And I was like, well, this game isn't very fun, but man, throwing guys through plate glass windows with the, <laughs> the, with the ragdoll physics, it's yeah. just, it's fun. It's a fun, like, 30 minutes. Okay. Reggie, you played Minority Report uh, game? I always wanted to. I I think I, I own it on the Game Boy Game Boy Advance. I think I have that version, but I never played the PS2 one. Right. Copy that. Well, right. here's another. It's basically like total a spinoff of Total Recall, right? The, the Minority Report, like as they say, it's yeah, connected. kind of, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Is it? it? It's based on a Philip K. Dick short story, oh, so it's kind okay. of in the Philip K. Dick extended universe. universe. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Um. Uh, here we go. Here's a, here's another big one right here. Uh, another great example of the the video game based off of the movie is five million times better than the movie itself. X Men Origins Wolverine is the fucking shit. Ooh, yeah. what, that is the shit. Violent. And I remember the the opening cinematic, and it was so violent and bloody. And got a you know one of the soldiers is hiding behind this wall. And all of a sudden, he's got his head up against the wall, and all of a sudden, <clears throat> snick it like the claws go through the wall, through his head, <laughs> blood everywhere. And Wolverine's on the other side, like, Yeah, I got you, bub. <laughs> and I was just like, This is already better than that atrocious movie. It's so good, so good. Talk about you guys played that one. Talk about that... people who know the game they're making. This is basically just God of War, but they use the licensed characters so well, right? Yeah, yeah. so Origins. The movie is that the one where Deadpool was in it? No. Uh, yeah, he, he had like, his mouth on the so it's Bizarro Deadpool. Okay, I, I feel weird because I actually liked that movie, and I, I saw. Oh, it. I I could see I could see people liking it for good bad purposes. I like it because sure. of Sa- his brother Sabretooth in the movie. You know, Sabretooth's one of the positives. That's, yeah, yeah that's, that's the reason. The, the opening, uh, the whole opening scenario showing him and his brother through. The different eras of war yeah. that, that was, was legitimately was... good, yeah, yeah, that uh, was good, yeah. I but I saw a weird version of the movie. There was a, a, a there was an early cut of the movie that got leaked on the inter- internet, oh, yeah. And I saw that, and I'll never forget the Deadpool, and you can see the strings and <laughs> Scott, <laughs> yeah. Scott Adkins and Scott Adkins. Uh, appearance. Yeah. I'm like, how the hell did that get leaked, man? And yeah, the, the, just... the CGI wasn't done either, it was like an early, uh-uh. and, and they blamed crazy. that. They blame that leak for the movie's failure, and it's like, no, you know why you guys failed. You know why I it was crazy though, because I remember my buddy had downloaded it on his computer, and we yeah. watched it, and we went back to watch it like the next day, and it, the file was gone. We're like, what the hell? Like it was just disappeared. We're like, whoa, what? what's going on here? Yeah. You know. So whoa. I was like, that was crazy. But um, yeah, yeah, that that was my experience with the movie. I I, I have to go back and watch it again to make sure yeah, I still feel the same way about it. Right. But the game, go back to the game, though, man. I mean, yeah, they they really, the PS3 version of the game, like they really like made sure they they got to do what they wanted, which shows. Yeah, fuck the other versions of that game, though. Yeah, because I think the PS2 version was something totally different. It was garbage. Yeah, like, the PS3 version is the mm-hmm. is the one. Like Reggie, it's just something like the damage that would you yeah. that would like show on huge, like basically like see like uh, the the model didn't he, he looked like Hugh Jackman, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, from what I, from what I remember, yeah. yeah. And his yeah. like he'd get like ripped apart, he's got skin hanging off of him, he's yeah. like gaping wounds. <laughs> yeah. And just like, yeah, he would get genuinely messed up in that game and heal from yeah. it. But I heard if you would 
get super messed up and then go into a cutscene. You'd have a person talking to you like and nothing's happening. Meanwhile, half your face is missing. <laughs> like, just don't, don't, don't stare at it. Just don't you know, pretend like you don't see it. Yeah, just so good. Just, just launching yourself on top of helicopters, <laughs> fucking people mm-hmm. up, killing oh, them with the, up into the blades. <laughs> yeah, the blades. Oh, another fun moment. Going back to the Warriors video game, one of my favorites is it gets to the end of the movie, the end of the game. And you get to play as the riffs kicking the villain's ass while the game credits are going <laughs> yeah. up. You get to play yeah. as the riffs beating the shit out of them on the beach mm-hmm. while the game credits are going up. It's, it's so good. So mm-hmm. I just, that, that was that's a scary memory. That's a scary scene, though, because I remember when I saw that scene where the, they let the warriors go, and you yeah. can see like uh, David Patrick Kelly's character all like all yeah. like he's all colored up because his hand, and then you just saw you just see the rips as walking up on them like from different yeah. angles and you hear him scream yeah. it's, it's eerie if you think about it man because you know what's going down mm-hmm. they're yeah. at a beach like yeah. I, I isolated from it, like everything and it's like yeah you hey Reg- reggie 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 no no <laughs> it wasn't us it, it was, was them. them the warriors did it <laughs> <laughs> did, did you know uh the warriors come out and play scene was ad-libbed he did that all yeah that was ad lib. Totally see that. The yeah. bottles he said, and everything. Yeah, he said uh, the direct Walter Hill went up to him and said, uh, "I want you to do something that you think would scare them. They don't know what you're going to do. I'm just going to film you." And so he did that. One of the greatest movie yeah. ad lib lines ever. Yeah, it is. Sure. Yeah. And uh, shout out to that actor. He's actually a martial artist. <laughs> did you guys know that? Huh. Yeah. He's actually a martial artist. If you watch Dreamscape, he whips out spiked. Uh, nunchucks mm-hmm. in dreamscape and he's using spike nunchucks wow. he actually knows martial arts martial arts which is kind of a fun fact i didn't know that about the guy uh but yeah let's keep going here uh yeah x-men origins fantastic fantastic game this now we're getting to the slim pickings the 2010s yeah. when we're gonna be all over the place when it all kind of went came crumbling down right um but we got we got some other ones here uh does this count reggie Alien trilogy for PS1. Does that count? Yeah, because it's based off of the trilogy, okay. you know, okay. obviously. But in uh, isolation, that, I think would count too. Yes, because that's a sequel, right? Uh, yeah, it's an interquel. It's like between parts one and two. Right? Isn't it Ripley's daughter? Mm-hmm. Or no? Mm-hmm. Okay. But yeah, Alien great. trilogy for PS1. That was a great game. Mm-hmm. That game um, legit scared me back in the day. Like that yeah. was the atmosphere was really good. Yeah, because yeah, you had the little, the little, uh, the, son- the, the sonar thing, so you can see where, mm-hmm. where they were moving yeah. and everything. So yeah, I forgot what yeah. it's called, but you know. But uh, Alien Three, I remember that the that game for Sega Genesis and the different version of that movie game for SNES mm-hmm. was different. I I remember both of those being pretty good. Mm-hmm. Alien Three for Genesis and. About the movie, at least that cut of the movie wasn't that great. <laughs> Um, yeah, you gotta gotta watch the other cut. Remember, I, I saw the other cut, and I, I remember I, I I saw him and I told you about him. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, but Batman Forever. Let's get to some Ooh. dog shit. Um, uh, hey, what's popular out there? Mortal Kombat digitized characters. Okay. All right, Batman Forever movies out. All right, let's make a game. Let's just copy Mortal Kombat. Even the move set and control. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. But it's not a fighting game. It's an action platform. Fuck it. It plays Let's like Mortal it. Kombat. With, with, yeah. with what's, what's, what's really neat is that it's okay. I this game is terrible. I played it on the Genesis, which might be the better version. So six button controller doesn't matter. Yeah. But it's still kind of neat that they tried to do platforming and Mortal Kombat style fight scenes. Yeah. Two years before Mortal Kombat mythologies trying yeah. to do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I, oh. yeah, I'm kind of it's it's really interesting. Like they could have gone the Batman Returns route, just done the regular traditional brawler, or the Batman Forever arcade game, which is the same thing. Yeah, and right. they decided to do something that we're going to use digitized actors. We're going to have right. it control a bit like a fighting game. Um, and it's I'm going to give them points for trying. Okay. It's a okay. it's an interesting failure. It's an ambitious okay. failure. So. I'll, I'll give them that much, but yeah, like Batman Returns for the SNES, it literally everything that it did everything it set out to do, and it did it well. Yeah, Batman that Forever tried yeah. to do some really cool stuff, and it did all of it badly. Right there, there's one thing good about the Batman Forever movie. Okay, so you ready for this? Uh-huh. Kiss, Kiss by a Rose. 
Seal? They put that <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> that, was a, that was a good song. Um, I remember Tommy Lee in that movie was so over the top. Man, it's like, man, I just not feeling this. I, well, I think if they went with the original script for Batman Forever, maybe it would have been better. What do you guys think? Like the Michael Keaton version where uh, they had um, there's like a Marlon, post, Marlon, Marlon Wayans as Robin. Or, I think that's still kind of yeah. weird, but maybe Billy it would have been better. Billy Williams as Two Face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Wow. He right. actually you know, really wanted to play that role. That's like, nah, man. <laughs> You know, Marlon Wayans got paid to not still get be paid. In Batman Forever. Yeah, he got paid. He had a pay. He had a play, a pay or play deal. So when they decided to cast Chris O'Donnell instead of him, he still got paid. So he's still. Wow, paid. I did not know that. You know, so, there's been a there's been a rumor. Uh, well, not a rumor, but they're they're trying to build hype, kind of like the Schneider cut of Justice League of the Schumacher cut. I think mm-hmm. it's called the Schumacher cut of Batman Forever, but some kind of cut. Uh, where there's deleted scenes where the movie's actually a little bit darker that didn't make the final movie. Yeah, I saw some of the deleted scenes. They yeah. have them on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. those People scenes want, would have definitely made the, the movie better. Yeah, they want, you know, fans want a that version out, like remastered, so people could see it. Yeah. I would Smith, watch it for sure. Yeah. Kevin Smith saw it. He said, from the sounds of it, the whole movie is very different. Like, it's very Good. rearranged. Like, it doesn't start with the Batman suiting up. It actually starts with him uh, meeting Edward Nigma at uh, Wayne Arkham, Town. right? Was it Arkham? No, not Arkham. Oh, like okay. When he goes into his, because he's still an employee. Right, so, right, right, right. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of stuff. Like, it's way darker. Uh, a lot of the dialogue is less over the top. Right. Um, Caffeine will kill you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I would watch it for sure. I would definitely watch I'd it. I'd watch it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Batman Forever. I remember the graphics. I was like, "Whoa, this looks cool!" But then I started playing, and I was like, "Oh, oh, you know what? The music was terrible." And they made it for the Game Boy, and it's the same game. The music was it, so it looked bad, bad on the SNES, and it's on the Game Boy and the Game Gear. Yeah, the music I remember for that for the Genesis version was bad. Now, speaking of speaking of Batman, um, the Batman Returns game for Genesis wasn't that good. It was really average and ugly. The yeah. SNES one, the SNES one was way better. Oh, However, yeah. Batman Returns for Sega CD, CD. Yep, was right. legit. It the still music. came with the, the 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 bad Genesis game, but the well, Batmobile but even... scenes were amazing, bro. Yeah. The graphics is like, dude, Sega CD should have been making tons of games like this. It would have destroyed Super Nintendo. It would have destroyed all its competition. But again, it wasn't used to its potential, like Reggie said. But the Batmobile racing is, and there's a Batwing one at the end too. No, no, the bat, but the boat, the boat yeah. at the end. Did either of you guys ever play yeah. Batman and Robin for the PS1? Oh, that's um, hard to find, isn't it? Probably. That's rare. I, I, I did it. play. I thought it was it's, Super Nintendo. Oh, no. It's, it's, so, it's, it's based it off the arcade 90, game. So it was 97 and yeah. Batman and Robin. It's for, insane. <laughs> based on the George Clooney one. Yeah. It's, oh, it's that open, one. Okay. I think it's a cartoon. Open world superhero game. It's insane. And yeah. They try to, and you basically are like going around the city. You can either walk or you can get to a vehicle, and you're trying to stop all these things, bad things from happening on the PlayStation One. You want to <laughs> guess why it didn't work? <laughs> yeah. The graphics were like, like ooh, but you know, ooh. It did it yeah, start it us down the road to getting Arkham Asylum? Who knows? But <laughs> it's still like, it, it's incredibly ambitious. And for a yeah. minute, everyone's like, this might be the first video game movie that's better than this better than the movie it's based on. And yeah, I need to pick but that I one up. Didn't so. have a high bar to clear and somehow didn't clear it. I think I'm thinking of the, the arcade beat em up. And that's that, that, yeah. that had a PS one one. That one, that's what I'm thinking about. That one was uh, like really ugly in terms of like graphics, but they tried. That's that was rare. crazy. That was for, yeah, the forever one. I think you're talking about. Um, yeah. So going back to Batman Returns on Sega CD, what was cool about that version was it had a fantastic soundtrack. Yes, I remember. I remember an epic intro scene where it was it was showed a girl falling from the Christmas tree, and uh, Batman trying to rescue her, and then like yeah. he gets there too late, and then he goes to the title screen. But you can actually play that game in two ways. You could play it like the driving mode only, or you can play right. the side scrolling, or you can play yeah. them both together. Obviously, better to go with the driving and to right. me at least. And uh, I remember, I'll never forget when I first saw that game. And it shows the Batmobile coming towards the screen. And then when you get close to it, yeah. you get inside, it shows Batman like steering the steering wheel. I'll never forget how epic that scene looked. 
And you can tell it's definitely Michael Keaton, man. Even though yeah. it's mm-hmm. just like it's just he's that's just my Batman. But uh definitely yeah. had the game had a great soundtrack. Yeah. And um yeah. Got just, the got the got the statue right here. Got some <laughs> Keats. Keats right there, <laughs> bro. But yeah, music was great, uh yeah. for sure. But uh yeah, we got some bonus ones here, uh, some picks from me. Uh, and then we'll wrap it up for today. This is a blast. But I remember enjoying Dick Tracy for Sega Genesis. Did you play that one, Reggie? Not the Genesis version, but the NES version. How was that one? <sighs> Difficult. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't the... very easy at all. And I was a kid back then because we needed something a little bit more just bal- balanced, I would say. Right, it wasn't right, on the right. level of like Roger Rabbit hard or nothing like that, but it was just, yeah. I don't know. It just... yeah. But the one for Genesis was cool. It was like Cabal. Like you just yeah, just it. like you know, Tommy gun shooting guys. Yeah, right? it was yeah that's the way it should have been yeah. <laughs> on NES. Yeah. That was dope. That was a good one. Uh Ramble 3 for Sega Genesis. I yeah. used to play that a lot. That was fun. You have the bow and arrow sequences, you taking out the helicopter. The uh the on foot missions were generic, but it was still fun. It was still like, did, did, solid... it have, did, it have, did it have that stick fight scene like in the movie in the beginning? Like, <laughs> no, it should have. Uh, that it should have. Nothing, man. I love that scene so much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that was Ooh. the movie where he actually pushed Ooh. out the bullet and used gunpowder to, to heal oh. himself. <laughs> oh, so. Well, I'm just picturing, like, hey, let's put that on, like, the 3DS, and then the, the pulling out the bullet is, like, a touch screen. You have to use a touch yeah. screen to pull the bullet out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, I remember Rambo 3 being solid. Uh, Ghostbusters for Sega Genesis. It had these really, like, yeah. chibi-looking characters, like, like cartoony, but I heard. I remember it being fun. You know, yeah. you can go against State. Didn't, they, didn't they mod that game to put Winston back into it? Because yes. they didn't have Winston in the original, the, yes. the original version. Yeah, they did. Yeah, you could play Winston now, which is great. Uh, which is how it should have been. Uh, but yeah, Ghostbusters was fun. Now I don't remember these two games being amazing, but I remember them being solid uh, action platformers. You have Judge Dredd and Demolition Man. Have you guys played those? Judge Dread, I played the PlayStation version, um, which is like a first person shooter, mm. a gallery shooter, I would say. It's fun. Okay. PS2 one's more like a first person game. So those games are pretty solid. I don't know if it came out on Super Nintendo. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it was Genesis um, and Never yeah, played were, those like, versions. Yeah, I remember, being, I remember it being really hard. Yeah, yeah. But I remember not hating yeah. them. Like, you can even arrest people, you don't have to, you could blow them away. Yeah. You, I am the lure. You get blow away. I remember, away, I remember like the crazy them. Taco Bell ad they had when those games and that movie came out. Because <laughs> that was the, that was the they were eating Taco Bell in the movie. Like every restaurant was Taco Bell in the movie for three C sales. That was yeah, yeah, gross. Yeah. <laughs> no toilet paper in the future. Like, oh, really? It's like, like, like Last Action Hero, it was ahead of its time because it was making fun of the, it was making fun of that era of action movies, but it did it yeah. just a little too early. Yeah, yeah, it broke the fourth wall, I believe, in the movie. Yeah. Right? Like, it did all that it was, stuff. It, it made fun of Arnold, in a way. Arnold poked fun at himself. Oh, yeah. I was always jealous of Demolition Man for 3DO because it looked, the graphics looked really cool. And it mm-hmm. had these really cool cinemas from the movie. There was, they created scenes with Stallone and them created scenes for that game. But I don't know if that game was any good. I mean, you guys played 3DO. Demolition so. 3D. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But I remember like I seeing a cut scene of when you die all the time and Stallone in character is on screen. He goes, You suck. <laughs> like he's like, stop playing the game. Like he's talking <laughs> shit to you. So I was always curious about that. If anybody watching right now, please uh let us know if you've actually played Demolition Man for 3DO and if it was any good. Uh Ghostbusters the video game for PS3, enhanced for mm-hmm. PS4. That yeah. everyone considers that the real sequel, the real true sequel, and that oh, game amazing, amazing game. It's it's the least disappointing Ghostbusters thing, possibly yeah. since the first movie. <laughs> I like the sequel. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I like it's, the it's sequel, sequel's fun. Yeah, yeah the, the game kind of. Yeah. Yeah, I think the game captured something, and after everything that came after that was like either too yeah. different. Or it was too reverent when, in fact, it's just a movie about the three kind of scumbags starting yeah. a, a very out there business. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you know, and a lot of people love the the newer movies, but it's just there's a limit to the member berries. There's mm-hmm. a limit to the member berries, man. Like, 
I I enjoyed the ending to the uh, to Afterlife. I haven't seen Frozen Empire or whatever the new fucking movie's called. Is it but, out? Uh, yeah, it came out earlier this year. I am I I have no interest it to watch. Did it. not do well. Yeah, oh. I have no interest to watch it. But <laughs> the ending to the first film was the best part. And if you guys have seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But my wife, man, she's just like, fuck this movie. <laughs> <laughs> like she liked the ending. She liked it. I loved it. Just because of what they do, but um, do I love the movie? No, but the ending mm -hmm. I enjoyed. But there's so much member berries. It's like, dude, come on, man. Like there's there's a scene where they get in a vehicle, the Ghostbusters vehicle, and they open up, they open up the glove compartment, and a Twinkie flies out. When that happens, my wife turned to me and goes, "Fuck this movie." <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> remember oh, yeah. he ate Twinkies? That was a big Twinkie. Do you remember? Wow. Yeah. It's all member berries all the time. Too much of that, dude. When you do too much, it's like, oh, for fuck's sake. Jesus Christ. Anyway, that's my <laughs> rant. All right. <laughs> Indiana Jones, uh, I think it was The Greatest Adventures or something like that for Super Nintendo. Reggie, you played that one? Uh uh. I didn't. No, I didn't play that one at all. It's I like heard Super that was Star Wars, but Indiana Jones. Mm. Oh, yeah, it was brutally a hard. Oh no! But very good looking game. Okay, okay, yeah, I heard that was was a good game. Uh, back to the look at this. Look how we're, we're returning once again to Sega CD. Terminator <laughs> for Sega CD is great, man. Yeah, it Reggie, is. good soundtrack yeah. by Tommy Tellerico. Dude, oh, that one was fun. I still have the soundtrack on CD somewhere. Really? Yeah, like uh, like a bootleg, like somebody. Yeah, it's cool. Like playing as Reese, you get to play as Reese finally. In the game, Dude, so that was cool. the graphics are great because the, the I remember Terminator for Sega Genesis was average, wasn't great. So they mm -hmm. the graphics did, the whole thing's totally different for Sega CD. They didn't do what they usually do, throw the Genesis game on there with enhanced sound and cinemas, you know, for the Sega CD game. Like they this is a brand new game engine for Sega CD. And it did have some full motion video cutscenes in there, but they're they're bad because it's pixelated. But the game and the music's legit, dude. Yeah, it's it's a legit, really good game, man. I miss you're making me miss my Sega CD. <laughs> I should have kept it. And my dad always told me, and I never listened to him. He goes, "Son, never always keep your toys, keep your comic books." When I would sell different video game consoles over the years, and I get when they get older and get tired, mm -hmm. and I want the newest thing, son, keep your old. He would always tell me that because now, now look, I'm nostalgic. You know, yeah. I'm nostalgic for all that stuff. I wish and now it's all like really it. worth a lot of money, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, back to Scarface you mentioned earlier. I never oh, played this. Oh, I man. never played yeah. this, James. So Scarface, is this? Scarface is really cool because you basically play the ending scene of the okay. movie, and then but you actually survive the attack. Yeah, get out. Yeah, you survive what? the attack and everything like that. So it's really so he basically he's rebuilding his empire and starting over. And everything, so dude, it's not, that's yeah, it, that's it's a cool awesome. game. It's not okay. the voice that Al Pacino didn't come back to do the voice because his voice has changed so much. So he he picked out a guy to help to do the, the voice actor for okay. his character. But um, it's a very like like underrated game. I would say a lot of people don't even know it exists, but it's it's good, man. I like it. It's like it's like Vice City, really, except it's instead of taking inspiration from Scarface, it is Scarface. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's because good. I, I, from the Wii, I, of all, I, of all systems. I mean. Wow. I gotta admit, I, I hate the ending of the movie because I felt like that wouldn't happen to him if he wasn't like on drugs. But um, <laughs> or maybe I don't know that whole thing. Maybe the drugs helped him survive longer. If you think about, I it think too. that's what happened. Yeah, yeah. That's what's happened. <laughs> but I hated that that guy got the drop on him. Man, I just that just yeah. never. Oh, I want him to get that yeah. guy. But uh, yeah, the, the game is 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 pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And I, of course, I love that movie. By the way, uh, but the world, the world is yours. That's right. Oh, speaking of, check this out. Oh, I don't want to fuck anything up. Hold on. Oh, don't. Oh, I'm fucking it up. <laughs> speaking of, oh, nice. I have the uh, the 4K here, and this was nice. uh, it came with. Uh, there we go. It comes with the world is uh, your statue. That's time. 4K. Dude. Yeah, I I have not opened this yet. It still hasn't been. Don't. <laughs> that's that is a collector's item. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, that's that Scarface music just just came to my head now, like when I saw that. that yeah, I know. Song. Yeah, push it to the limit. <laughs> it's a classic '80s montage song right there. Mm -hmm. uh, but people don't realize this. This is kind of a remake. 
Really? I don't know if you guys knew that. Yeah, this com- this actually comes with the original Scarface came out black. It was like an old black and white film from I think you, what forty li- Yeah, how'd you like that one? I enjoyed it. I mean, the, the remake's way better or reboot, right. whatever you want to call it. It's way better. Before its time, it's, though, yeah, it was it's entertaining. Movie. Yeah, but there's that you know, kind of like that triangle between his best friend and his sister. That's in there, you know. Wow. The guy was having a, the guy playing Scarface was having fun. You know he. You know he's he's I think he's, he's a white guy. He's not from Cuba or anything like that. Yeah. But uh, but no, it, it's fun for 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 its time for sure. Okay. All right, um, Spider Man Two for PS Two. Oh, yeah. That kind of that kind of changed the game, didn't it? For movie license, it did. It was the first free roam uh, superhero game. At least I think it was. I mean, you were swinging around those cities, man, in uh, yeah. the city, and it was it was looking pretty good. I remember how much fun I had playing it. Um. It was definitely uh, just the open world for that game really helped open, like, kind of make people look at the series more than past the movies. I would say if that makes any sense. The first one came out and it was very level based, and you were swinging off of nothing. Like the web was like just go straight to the air, and like, you didn't know what you were swinging on. But in Spider Man Two, you can see where the, the web is going and how you're swinging yeah. around the building. So I still think that game has the best web swinging out of all the Spider Man games to this day. And even got the voice actors to come and do the game as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, really cool. Um, I'll never forget the Statue of Liberty boss fight, which I hated because your your swinging skills came to use there, so mm. you had to be very okay. careful, <laughs> which was right, great. Right. But yeah, it was it, it it expanded the story of the movie, which was nice. So definitely a good game. See, you guys are making me want to go back and play these games again, right? <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm telling, I'm telling you, going down memory lane. It, it, this is a blast. This is a the, blast. the fact that like the webs, the the physics of it, like the webs had to attach to something that existed. Mm-hmm. And that really, it, it kind of set the momentum of like how you swung. You could also like run up the side of a building at certain points. Like yeah. If you got, if yeah. you were like building enough speed, you just kind of like run along it. It was, yeah. It. The, I don't know how they got the PS2 to do that. Yeah. Because it was a powerful system. Yeah, but it had limitations, and the fact they were able to make that happen, and make that happen in what 2004. 2004, yep. No, I guess it was, yeah, I guess it was kind of coming toward like the that that sweet spot in the console's or, life where everyone where knows where to get to use, they know how to use the hardware and take advantage of certain little like perks they have <laughs> or whatever, like that. So, yeah, 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 I would say, yeah, I remember that was good shit, man. Now we got some stinkers, uh, a no. couple of stinkers here, and then we're gonna uh, lead up to two, uh. Two great ones that I'm hearing are great, and I'm sure Reggie's already played these. So we'll end the we'll end the the podcast episode with that. But we got some bad ones here. Time Cop for Super Nintendo yes. was <laughs> terrible. So bad. You felt like you were on ice, like you're trying to move your character around. It's like, what is going on, dude? This what's what's really terrible. weird is it's obviously based on the movie, but yeah. the the box art is from the comic book. Explain that because <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it's really bad. Like I just was like, what the fuck? I, I think I only played it for like 10 minutes and I turned it off. Right. I was like, this is this is horrible. Now I'm nostalgic for this game, but I don't remember it being good. Karate kid for Nintendo Entertainment. That game is very difficult, man. Bad. It is, and I remember the, the mini game with the chopsticks, you had to get the fly, yeah. it was so annoying. Or dodging um, the, the blade. Like, yeah, like, that you, was too, that's supposed right. to do this. It wasn't even like programmed properly. That, it, it, ugh, horrible, yeah. man. Like yeah, really another bad. rush game. Like really bad. Uh now this one, I, I it's a guilty pleasure of mine, but it's trash. Dragon the Bruce Lee story. <laughs> For Sega not, Genesis. A half bad, not a half bad fighting game. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a fighter, but uh what what makes it worth playing, and I could it, it was I, I could not stop loving it every time it happened was you could do the bruce lee stomp finisher on people and crush their chest it's, like it's slow motion. The dragon. Mm-hmm. not in slow motion it's like but regular it was, speed but yeah it, but he does the ah, and then he does the, the was, twist in the, from into the dragon i just loved it i, I never <laughs> got old playing dragon the bruce lee store but it followed the <clears throat> movie for the most so part. so you had to fight those armor guys in the game too like he had like like the dude it looks like shredder yeah, I think yeah, you, he's, he's, you, yeah fight you, fight, you fight him. Yeah, yeah. Wow. There's also yeah. there's a part where you have to fight two people at once. The, so I'd never the, seen that in a fighting game before, where it's sailors, like two right? against one. 
the sailors at the party at the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> or those douchebags, whatever they were. They're, I forgot. It's been a while since I watched the movie. But yeah, it's like I played it, I enjoyed it, but I was just like, yeah, this is not good. <laughs> this is not good. But it's probably a thousand times better than the Bruce Lee game for Xbox, which I heard was oh. trash. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if you guys knew that that game even existed, but yeah, I, even, Bruce yeah, Lee I, game. Bar- I didn't remember that until you said something. <laughs> <laughs> like really bad so those are some stinkers uh one more stinker but it's a perfect setup for two great games i'm hearing nothing but amazing things about it because i believe i might be wrong reggie can correct me it's the same company but rambo the video game for ps3 which you cannot find it's gone it's delisted and which, yeah. what sucks what sucks is it's like so bad it's good game yeah, like, I exactly. seen reviews on it, and what what hurts me to this day is I had the game in my fucking hand. You see, I was in GameStop, and I was like, "Ooh, oh. Rambo the video game," and I didn't know it was gonna disappear. You could have been set for life. Yeah, I didn't. I know I didn't know it was gonna disappear. I was like, "Oh man, this is hilarious!" <laughs> I have to buy this for cheap as fuck one day, and I put it back on the shelf and got something else. And now you can't find it. But this, this, oh my god, it is like it follows the movie. It, fo- <laughs> the yeah, movie. it does. It does. The guy but, doesn't really look like like Sylvester Sloan, but you can tell they tried to make it, it makes it look hilarious that they're trying to look like him, but yeah. they can't at the same yeah. time. And it's so bad that they they were so lazy, instead of recreating the audio from scratch for the cinemas, the in-game cinemas, they literally like it felt the like they played the they played the VHS version of the movie. And, you said and the they used effects. that audio voices and attached like that. To the cinema, in-game mm-hmm. cinemas, mm-hmm. it's so bad, dude. But it's hilarious. It's and it, it doesn't even sound right, though. They could have used a no. better version of it. They used like a like yeah. like you said a VHS tape it's of it. So bad, <laughs> you could just totally tell. Just turn the movie on, turn it mm-hmm. on. All right, record well, that. So here's the secret about that game. A lot of people don't know. Uh, they actually made some DLC for it. And uh, oh, really? DLC, yeah, the DLC. I believe it was. Um, it was. It came out two years later for some weird reason. Because nobody was playing, but it came out two years later. Here's the thing: um, it was free on PC, but it cost ten bucks on the PS3. But yeah. there was a problem with it. The DLC didn't work with the physical copy of the game. It only worked if you had the digital version of it. So a lot oh. of people, like myself, bought the DLC, but we couldn't play it on the physical version. And what was sucked. the DLC? It what was, was a pre- it? it was a prequel called Baker Team, like Ramble while he was with his his, his buddies. So they made oh, their own little story. And yeah, it was oh, free. Yeah. It's it awesome. Neat. I mean, oh, awesome ish, I would say, because it's a bad game. Yeah. But, uh, it just, it, it just really, it just kind of killed all steam for me that I couldn't play it because I, I paid for it, but then it, it wasn't compatible. And then they had no way to fix it. So, yeah. developers still around. They were able to make more su- successful games than Rambo, thankfully, but Rambo was right. definitely a stinker. Which we're going to get to right now if it's the same company. Now, this is the same company that did Terminator Resistance, right? Yes, it is. Okay. Now- uh, James, have you played this? I've heard nothing but great things about Terminator. Resistance. I have not. <laughs> oh wow! It's yeah. like perfect. You gotta play it. You gotta play yeah. it. You're gonna love it if you like. Terminator. It's actually good. Oh yeah. Yeah, like really good, man. Mm-hmm. Like you're. It's in the future. You're behind enemy lines. You know, you're with the resistance in the future. But well, like, the interesting part they couldn't afford to have in the movies because it's just too big and expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But they pulled it off and. Uh, if you get it now, James, you can um, get the upscaled version for I think PS5 because yep. it was a PS4 game, yep. but they enhanced the graphics for the PS5. Oh, okay. And, and it, was actually, it was actually a free download. I didn't know that because like, I bought oh, it on PS4. <clears throat> yeah, and then I was kind of browsing PlayStation Store, and they had an upgrade for free to enhance mm-hmm. the the game's graphics. So and, I gotta, it, and it comes with it. if you get on PS5, it comes with one of the, the DLC packs where you play as the Terminator and going through their story. No so that's way. Like, uh, that's on the PS5 version, yeah. What? See, this oh, this is people who they get the license. They know how yeah. to make the most of it. You know it. how to make it, yeah. Dude, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. But th- I think it's the same company that has done the critically acclaimed, everyone mm-hmm. loves it, it kind of came out of nowhere, Robocop Rogue City. Same people. Yep. Same that's people. insane, dude. So they really improved. Going from Rambo, he's not a man, he's a god. Every time the villains shoot you and you don't die, he's not a man, he's a god. They just keep repeating that over and over again, which is hilarious I mean, and annoying. Do you, do you get an achievement for shooting everybody in the dick? <laughs> wow. Is, is that an achievement? Because if it's not, it should be. 
Yeah, yeah. It's cool that Rambo is an open world game because there there was a sequence in the game where you find this kid, he's like spraying graffiti on a putting graffiti on the wall. Yeah. yeah. And you have a choice whether you want to arrest him or let him go. And you know, I let him go. And then when you come back there the next day around that area, there will be a mural of Robocop on the wall, which is freaking hmm. it was freaking cool. So I like what? little stuff, like things like that in the game. Yeah. It nice. feels like an open active world, like it's alive actually. So it's really a good yeah. game. That I think a lot of people will, will love when they play it. I was waiting for it to get discounted. It's dropped to thirty four bucks, so I'll probably pick it up now. But, yeah, yeah, I just I just recently bought it, and I, I haven't popped it in yet. But I'm I'm getting the itchy trigger okay. finger for mm-hmm. gaming, man. Go ahead. It takes like before a RoboCop three, thankfully. So I think it takes <laughs> oh, it's like between one, one and two. two. Oh, it's, I, oh, it's between I, one and two. I believe so. Are between two between two and three? I don't think it's between two and three. I think it's between one and two. So yeah. Okay. Okay. There, 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 was, there was a third movie. I don't yeah, know. There was, there was no, a third, there was a third movie. It never happened. <laughs> and there were no TV series based on it either. No, not not two of them either. There's no, one. definitely would never be two. Why would we make two? <laughs> there wasn't even one. <laughs> I but find no. though, like one of the most the the best ways to make these kinds of movie based games is to make them like long after. The movies are long after the movies. Like Goldeneye, the game came out two years after the movie. The Robocop, when's the last time we got a proper Robocop movie that wasn't a remake? Same thing with, you know, a Terminator movie. Like we got Dark Fate, but, you know, it it, it wasn't meant to coincide with it. Or even like The Warriors was how many decades after The Warriors came out that we got the game? Like what, 20 some odd years? I think there's lots of movies that didn't get games that really would make great games. And we now have the, the the tech and we have the tools to make it happen in an awesome way. Yeah. So before you know, before we go, I really want to ask, what action movie that didn't get a video game would you like to see have a video game now? Yeah, yeah. Let us know in the comments for sure. Yeah, mm. like we need we need to do this for like definitely because there's like like you said, there's so many. I've been wanting. I know there was one in. I don't know if it was spectrum or whatever the fuck amiga whatever the fuck it was called in the 80s but i, I want i want a a badass beat em up in the in the vein of like shredder's revenge or something like that with but big trouble little china characters i've been oh, wanting oh, oh. a big trouble little china game forever you <laughs> can play as the three you can play as you know egg shen burton or wang there's your three Wait. characters. <laughs> like, dude, this is like epic, bro. You get the three storms or the bosses. Oh, you fight Lil Pan at the end. How has this not happened? Can we bring in John Carpenter to do the soundtrack for this yes. game? Yeah. He's, he's a gamer. Right. He's a hardcore gamer. Yes. Yes, we need to do this. That'd be, oh, yeah, that'd be good. I'd play that. I'd play Here's that. the one. Ooh. I would make, well, I would have them make Highlander a video game. I think that'd be pretty cool. Dude. Um, what kind yeah, of game know, would right? it be? Would it be would it fighting? What kind of game would it be? Fighting? I think it would be more of an open world game or whatever like oh. that. You know, um, okay, action adventure, a- action open world. open world. You know, so you go where okay. you want. You know, to handle certain events because that game story, the lore is deep. So I don't yeah. want it to be just a simple yeah. beat em up where it just goes through like the game. Right. Take, kind of like in a way like a Terminator Resistance is kind of open. Well, not okay. semi open world, I would say, but yeah, yeah, Something like just, that. It'd, that'd be dope too because you can randomly just run into other immortals. And you mm-hmm. get the sense, you get that tingling, and you're like, "Oh shit!" The quick there, could be oh, no. only, there could be only one. <laughs> hey, Clancy Brown, have him come back and voice Kurgan, son. Dude, I'll never forget That's that close. that scene in the church, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> better to burn out and the fade away, or something. Like yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so good, so good. Kurgan is like epic. Yeah, epic. another cool. another amazing movie. Ooh, good luck on the reboot. If they're still doing that, oh. we'll see what happens on that. How, one. how many times have they, how many different directors and actors have been attached yeah. to Highlander remake? Yeah. Um, maybe it's so. best just to let it, just let it go. Like, like Blade. Like, like yeah. let Blade go. <laughs> let it go. Stop stop it. It. It's not because Blade is what kicked off the Marvel movie. Universe. Yeah. Blade is still the shit. Speaking of Blade, wasn't there a PS1 game? Yeah. There was a PS1 was, game, was, Game Boy was Color. Good? Yep. Game Boy Color, PS2. Were they good? The Game Boy Color one is is pretty good. I actually talked about it in a recent video. The PS One, okay. <sighs> little funky. It's mediocre, okay. I would say. And then the Part okay. Two on the on the PS Two, that one's mediocre as well. But 
Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're a fan of the series, you could probably find a way to like some stuff about them. But the Game Boy Color yeah. one is the more solid one, I think. Right. So there you it's go. It's always funny they, how that works out. Yeah. Right. right? Weird. Like the best. The yeah. best version of Daikatana is on the Game Boy Color. <laughs> Why? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, Big Trouble Little China for me, Highlander for Reggie. James, do you have one? A movie you I want was, to see a game? For whatever for? reason, I just would like to see a Battle Royale game based on the movie Moon uh, Guns. Dude, you can trust anybody. Dude. Yeah, Battle Royale game. I like, just watched that on Blu-ray. I had some yeah. fun revisiting yeah. Moon Guns. Like Mambo soundtrack. Yeah. I, well, I still love the scene. My favorite, like the most iconic thing from uh, it is the very beginning, they dump the guns. Yeah, whether which are all empty, and then they dump the bullets, and then another bin full of steel baseball bats, and it's like, do you go for the bullets and reload your gun, or do you go for the bat and take out the people trying to reload their guns? And like, how would you make that? That would be it's like screw Fortnite and your stupid bus. That's how that's yeah. how a battle royale match should start. It should be a total bloodbath from the get go, and then whoever right. might happen to be like the the 15 or so people who happen to be left are in this like this crazy tense standoff. I am sold. Mean Guns, the video game. Let's fucking go. All three of us came up with great ones right here. Uh, we're all good. All great ones. But yeah, there's so many. So let us know in the comments below. Uh, we, of course, there are probably hundreds of thousands of movie licensed action movie video games that we did not cover. So let us know because there's too many. <laughs> so let us know in the comments which ones we have missed. Some movie license action uh, games that, you know, uh, were good, great, or bad. Let us know in the comments. And don't forget, play it now, baby. Yeah. Support independent filmmaking. Let's go. Support independent uh, g- video game making. Let's do this. So play it now. Make sure you tip right. my man James. Uh, tell him tell him Samurai Guy sent you. <laughs> and don't forget to follow the radical one up here, baby. He knows his video games. That's right. He is a a professional video gamer and collector <laughs> and YouTuber. Yeah, make sure you subscribe. Most likely, you're probably already subscribed to this guy. But hey, if you had fun here on the podcast and on the channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the old samurai guy. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Keep watching action movies. Keep watching martial arts movies. Keep playing awesome video games. And we see you on the next one. Oh, really quickly, should we do another one about actual action movie stars? That were in video games, not based off of movies, but like, for example, Bruce Willis's Apocalypse that came out mm. for PS1. That yeah. might be an upcoming episode. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, Jet Li had a game. There's all kinds of stuff out there. Oh, shit. That just reminds me. I forgot the goat. Je- I forgot the goat. Awesome video game. John Woo's Chow Yun Fat Stranglehold. Oh, baby. yeah. The sequel of the Hard Boiled. How did I not forget? How did I not we just devote that? a whole episode to that one because that that, that, that game and that movie are amazing, dude. The online, to, yeah, it's an official sequel to Hard Boiled. Yeah, and it comes and with the movie if you get the special edition too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how did I not mention that? What, what's what? crazy? Real fast about that game though, uh, when, you, you, when, you, when it was online, you would find people like doing all the stunts, like like going on the rails, like Max Payne type. It was yeah. so crazy seeing it online yeah. for that game back in the day. It's yeah. great. And the cool spin around John Woo, Chiang Fat maneuver that kind of clears the screen, but you have the John Woo doves floating in the background when that happens. Yep. Fucking stranglehold. I feel that flew under everyone's radar for some reason. That should have been a hit. That should have been a smash. Uh, but hey, you guys can track it down and play it now. <laughs> so, but yeah, thanks again for watching. Keep gaming. We'll see you on the next one, guys. Take care.